please allow me to introduce myself. I'm a man of stealth and fate. I've been around a long, long year, changing the course of history. Pleased to meet you. Bet you don't know my name. I'm Dr. Coincidence. I'm also Bernard Beitman, MD, a psychiatrist, Dr. Beitman. I wanna give you a sense and a feeling for the mind, this one that produced the ideas in this book, Meaningful Coincidences. These ideas were created by streams of information flowing through my very curious mind from reading, from the stories I've heard, and a lot from my own experiences. For example, football and baseball shaped my understanding of reality. In high school and college, I excelled in football and baseball. I loved running for touchdowns and I loved stealing bases. I was good enough to be scouted by the professional football team, the Oakland Raiders, and also uh, go to a Pittsburgh Pirates tryout camp, another professional team for baseball went to one of their tryout camps. On those athletic fields, I experienced several great coincidences. I also learned to reach high while keeping my cleats on the ground. And so I've done that with coincidences, try to see how far they can go, but also trying to remain grounded, trying to remain grounded. This book, I have to say, is the best book on meaningful coincidences ever written. Many have tried to grasp the subject. Either they describe a lot of amazing stories or they summarize hard to understand theories, but rarely do they attempt to balance theory and stories. In this book, I've successfully done that, balanced storytelling and explanations. No author has yet worked with the overlap between serendipity and synchronicity. For example, finding the right job at the right time may be called serendipity by some people and synchronicity by others. I bring synchronicity and serendipity together by identifying their common factors. And the most common coincidences are those that involve a strong similarity between a mental event, a thought, an image, and an environmental event. A thought matches an object. Well, here's a quick summary of what you'll find in the book, Meaningful Coincidences. You'll find definitions of coincidences, serendipity, and synchronicity, as well as a little history about each one of them. The words coincide and coincidence came into the English language through philosophy during the early 1200s, and then in the 1600s were taken up by mathematicians. The word coincidence came into popular usage in American English with the simultaneous deaths of two ex-presidents, Thomas Jefferson and John Adams. Incredibly, each died on July 4th, 1825, 50 years after each of them had signed the Declaration of Independence. How'd that happen? A meaningful coincidence is an improbable, surprising and unexpected coming together of two apparently independent events with no apparent explanation just like these simultaneous deaths. The word serendipity was invented by Horace Walpole in 1754 to describe his ability to accidentally find things just when he needed them. And synchronicity was formally introduced to Western thinking by Carl Jung in 1972. The word has come to describe coincidences that promote either or both psychological 
and spiritual development. Well, what are these common meaningful coincidences? My research has come up with this list. One of the most common ones is that you think of an idea and then you hear or see it on the radio, TV, or internet, or maybe a book you're reading. Or you think of calling, texting, or emailing someone, only having that person unexpectedly contacting you. You may advance in your work, career, or education by being in the right place at the right time. I call that human GPS, the human ability to get where you need to be without any rational way of getting there, but you found, it, found your way there intuitively. Or you think of a question only to have it answered by some external source before you ask it. The sources, again, include radio, TV, internet, books, and other people. You may be introduced to people who unexpectedly further your work career. And one of the fun ones really is you need something and that need is met without your having to do anything. Yes, and some people find themselves in a position of needing a certain amount of money and that money just seems to show up. Those are the common coincidences that we found out with researching people at the University of Missouri who answered our research questions. They're pretty common experiences. And that's the point of all this is that meaningful coincidences are occurring around you every day, some more important than others. But in order to see them, you got to expect them. And what I'm trying to do is help you expect them so you can see them better and use them. A lot of people wonder about what the explanations are for some of these meaningful coincidences. And the definition, as you may notice, includes the phrase without any obvious explanation. That's part of the, the mystery of coincidences is just not knowing how they happen or not being sure of how they happen. So if you define a cause as suggested by the definition, the event is no longer a coincidence because you know how it happened. Well, you may know, and you may be one of them, that some people believe that they can explain all coincidences. They can explain every one of them. To them, there are no coincidences, again, because they can explain them. And the two most popular versions of that are God universe and random chance. Those who believe that it, God uni or universe causes coincidences know that God causes coincidences. Therefore, there are no coincidences because God or the universe is making them happen. They also believe, and they're not incorrect, that some of these coincidences are likely to contain messages for them personally. And they may think, for example, that it was meant to be, or coincidences are God's way of remaining anonymous, which always bothers me because if this is a way to remain anonymous and there's a coincidence, then God is no longer anonymous. But I'll leave that to you to decide. And everything happens for a reason, again, that reason being God or universe. I'll add mystery to that. On the other hand, statistically oriented people believe that coincidences all can be explained by random chance. Because statisticians know that randomness explains them, coincidences are expectable events that we remember because they are surprising to us, but they are not coincidences because they can be explained by random chance. They are just random events. Again, there are no coincidences from this random chance perspective. But there's a problem. Uh, using God, universe, or random chance as explanations takes responsibility away from 
you. Because each explanation suggests that you are powerless, powerless in the face of inexplicable forces. Randomness, for example, says that you have nothing to do with creating coincidences. Stuff happens because we live in a random universe. It's, it just happens. You think coincidences may have something to do with you, but they don't. When God universe is called on to explain coincidences, you are the recipient of divine grace. If you think you have something to do with it, you are deluding yourself because the divine is at work. I'm a therapist. When I sit with somebody in an office or on Zoom, I, I've got to assume they have some personal responsibility in the problems they bring to me. So many times people think it's something else or somebody else or it's ever the other people's fault, but the only thing I can deal with is the person in my office. And that's what I try to do. And that's the way I think about coincidences that we have a certain degree of personal agency. We have something to do with making them happen. Randomness and God are the polar opposites in explaining coincidences. Well, what about you? Aren't you involved to some degree? The evidence strongly suggests that you are. Probability does play a role because some coincidences are more unlikely than others. So there has to be a probability to every coincidental event. It should, sometimes they're hard to define, to calculate, but there has to be some probability. And mystery plays a role because our minds cannot grasp the multiple stirrings hidden behind the veil of our ignorance. But here lies some of the beauty in the study of coincidences. They, they make us wonder how much do we have to do with them and how much is beyond our current concept of ourselves in the world. Well, coincidences are real, they happen. They are real. You can choose the random perspective and with a wave of your mental hand, dismiss most coincidences as not worth further attention or you can attribute them to a guiding higher intelligence, or you can seek out your personal contributions and make life into an adventure of discovery, both about your relationships, your connections to the world around you, and the connections among and between the people you know. As you explore, you are likely to uncover latent human abilities within you and the realities around you that are hiding in plain sight. Well, one of those realities that I've discovered that I believe exist, I call the psychosphere. The psychosphere is our Earth's mental atmosphere. In other words, there's a, there's a mind atmosphere around us, something like there's an air atmosphere around us. Just as we breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide, we take in energy and information from the psychosphere and release energy information into the psychosphere. We can connect with other beings through the vibrating dynamic tunnels in the psychosphere. We can know what is going on at a distance as if we have webcams and innate human G. GPS. Well, I hope by this time you're saying, hey, Dr. Coincidence, or, or, or hey, Bernie, or hey, Dr. Biteman, or whatever you're going to want to call me. What proof do you have that, there, that the psychosphere exists? Where's your evidence? Important question. How do you know? How do you know? I respond. You are immersed in an air atmosphere. How do you know it contains oxygen, carbon dioxide, and nitrogen? You can't see it. You can't feel it. You can't touch it. You believe what scientists tell us. Before science identified the constituents of air, human beings equated breath with spirit, with some unseen energy. They knew they were taking in something 
which to them felt like energy and spirit. It kept them alive. Think about fish. Most fish experience only water. But dolphins and whales can penetrate above the surface and experience another reality, the air atmosphere besides their water atmosphere. Coincidences propel us beyond our air atmosphere to highlight something yet to be scientifically studied. They illuminate the invisible currents that connect and unite us through the psychosphere. They illuminate the invisible currents that connect and unite us through the psychosphere. They show us the ways in which we are all connected to each other and to the animals and plants surrounding us. And what I'm most interested in is creating a cartography or a map of the psychosphere and coincidences help us create that map. But that's a lot of background and definitions. Well, you know, I played football, cleats on the ground. I wouldn't be doing this if coincidences weren't useful and they are useful. And here are some of the ways they are useful with a few uh, illustrations I wanna be able to, to tell you about. A college student was waiting at a red light to drive through an intersection. The light turned green, but as her light, the light turned green, her cell phone rang. She looked down to answer, which delayed her acceleration into the intersection. When she looked back up, a truck had run the red light through the intersection she were just where she would have been if she had accelerated earlier. The call, the truck didn't happen. The call was from her brother. They had not spoken in months. And she had always thought of him as a protector of hers. And here again, he was. It confirmed the connection between the two of them, which is one of the things that coincidence, coincidences help people do is recognize their connections with each other. Coincidences can also encourage decisive action when it appears that action is necessary, not just stopping. And this time, in this story, it was a go. Dana Nelson Isaacs reported the following story. I kept getting calling, I kept getting cell phone calls from an unknown source, she wrote, identifying themselves as our electrical utility company. They were threatening to disconnect our service if we didn't call back with our sensitive personal information, which I assume was credit cards. Suspecting it was a scam, she correctly hung up, she says, and dialed the utility company directly. It was the same number that I was calling her, so she figured maybe it was a legitimate call she was getting. But after a long wait, she finally reached a receptionist and the receptionist confirmed there, there indeed was a scam going on in which the per perpetrators mimic the utility company's correct phone number. She was about to get off the phone, she says, happy to have avoided the scam when it occurred to me to ask about her own account while she had the person's attention. After he opened their file, it turned out that our electricity was scheduled to be shut off a couple of days from then, and we had accidentally underpaid and missed our warning notice. So the scammers ended up helping her out. A coincidence had helped her avoid the hassle of having to reconnect their electricity. Well, her intuition helped her a lot, helped Dana with that because she decided that she needed to ask about their own bill. That's efficiency and it made a good connection for her and reduced a lot of hassle. Coincidences can help with jobs. So this guy uh, gets invited to this wedding of his ex-girlfriend and he doesn't wanna go, but he feels obligated to go because he said he was gonna go. 
So he went and he got there late. He missed the ceremony, which I think he wanted to do and arrived in time for the dinner. When he looked around the, the tables for his place to sit, there was only one seat that left, was left. After some, discuss he, some discussion with one of his previously unknown dinner partners, that person offered him a much needed job that fit excellently with his profile. So he walks in, sits down with the only place the next the only place left open and find somebody who connects him with a good job for him he had he was looking for months and couldn't find anything and here it was accidentally coincidentally serendipitously synchronicity getting the job he needed but it was important that he came late and that he initiated conversation with the person sitting next to him i had a real fun one when i was uh, at the University of Washington. I had worked there half time for, for about three years after I finished my residency. And uh, the chair called me into the office and he said, uh, hey, Bernie, uh, we need you to go full time uh, or you're out. And I said, no, I, I, gotta, I gotta work on my book. I, I was writing a psychotherapy book at home and uh, I needed to do that half time. I wrote in the morning and came came to work in the afternoon at the outpatient clinic. So I had to, I made my decision and I was devastated. So I went home wondering what I was going to do and I kept working on my book. A few months later, something told me. I mean, these are intuitions things. I mean. We got this thing going on inside of ourselves that uh, is a guide or external to ourselves. You can point to diff both directions. So I followed an intuition to make an appointment with the chairman and to thank him for the opportunity I had to work there because uh, it was good for me. So I go in there and he told me, he said, um, uh, we just uh, hired somebody and we need somebody else to work on the consultation service, which is psychiatrist consulting with medical and surgical floors. And we need that person to work two half days a week. So you can go full time and work two half days a week and still work on your book. I said, I only do one half day. He said, okay, so I went from working half time to work to getting paid full time and coming in for a half a day to get the second half of the full time. Uh, that was a nice job. Uh, that, was, that was a nice thing to work out. And again, intuition got me to do something that sounded pretty silly, which is to go in and thank him for the opportunity to work there. Similarly, uh, coincidences can fulfill needs. Uh, there's a funny story of a woman showing up the, at the wrong day for um, an audition. She was a singer and she, she, there was a certain kind of music she wanted to do. I think it was opera. Uh, and the day she showed up, they were casting for a musical. And she said, all right, I may as well go try out for this. And it turned out that the musical far, be far better suited her talents than uh, the, the opera that she was applying for. And in the coincidence, coincidences save lives category, uh, another story, a man was way out in the country was driving an old tractor pulling a plow and no one knew he's out there the spring broke on the tractor seat and the man fell on the ground the back wheel of the tractor rolled over him and then his body got mangled by the blades of the plow following he couldn't walk he couldn't yell a babysitter in the secluded home outside the fields that he was caught in, happened to open the curtains of the right window to see him fall from the seat onto the ground and get rolled over by the tractor. That's good timing. She called 9-11, rushed out to help him, and without that timely curtain opening, he would have died. 
I'm a therapist and coincidences clearly help accelerate personal psychological change. Happens in therapy and happens outside of therapy. Uh, for example, outside of therapy, a friend of mine was attending a serendipity conference where he serendipitously on the first day began an enchanting romantic relationship with another attendee. Toward the end of the day, discord seemed to be setting in. Things weren't going so well for the two of them. And the next day, each appeared wearing similar colors, black, mostly black with white touches. He thought it meant their relationship should continue. When he told her his interpretation of the clothes color coincidence, she declared that black was the color of mourning and that the relationship was done, over. And so it was. What did my friend learn? Just because he is convinced about how a relationship is going, he'd better check with the other person because maybe his conviction is not reciprocated. Always a good idea when you can do it. Uh, the subtext of that one is like, the two of them got the memo of what the right clothes should be. I mean, this happens a lot where people end up wearing the similar clothing when they go show up in an event. Another story, but this was a patient of mine, was a 65-year-old man was struggling with long-standing catastrophizing. I mean, this guy was a great warrior. Not warrior, he was a great warrior. If there was anything possibly that could go wrong, he quickly went to the worst outcome and stayed there. He decided he wanted to change that pattern after quite a long time working with me. And then serendipity gave him a chance. Soon after that decision, his daughter-in-law gave birth to her second child. The infant had high bilirubin, which required remaining in the hospital. He knew that the outcome was likely to be positive because when his own daughter was born, she too had had a high bilirubin and was successfully treated by light therapy. He recognized that rationally he did not need to worry because the outcome was very likely to be positive based on past experience. So the second high bilirubin in a child became an opportunity to practice using his rationality to limiting his obsessive anxiety worry. Coincidences can be mind mirrors as some of these previous ones might illustrate to you. They can mirror what's going on in your mind like wearing the same colors uh, and same clothes as someone else that you know. Or less commonly, the finding that an old friend of yours who you hadn't talked with for a long time is estranged from one of her parents. And that estrangement is a lot like the way you're estranged from your father. Nice mirror. The real life dramas of others can mirror our personal psychological problems and their solutions. When one person does not like something in someone else, that can be a reflection that the person doesn't like in himself or herself. The advice one person gives a friend could be the advice the advisor needs to hear. Listen to what you're trying to tell somebody else to do. What someone else just learned about oneself can also be a lesson to the listener. Listen to the advice you give someone, you may be advising yourself. And movies, plays, and novels, and songs may, be mirror, may mirror our current psychological challenges. For example, a 60-year-old divorced mother of two fell deeply in love with a 25-year-old man. He loved her in his way, but he was soon to be moving to a distant place. The novel she was reading described a love affair between two people with similar age difference. To the novelist, doing this for the older person was less about the body or sexual attractions of the younger person, but more about the older person trying to get a deal, do over, to do over, to repeat her youth in a better way, which, you know, we can't do that. We can try, but this repetition thing 
we, we, time happens and we can't go back. The 60 year old woman did not want to believe that this applied to her situation. However, the parallel in the novel was like the advice from a good friend. She had to think about it. Coincidences can also accelerate spiritual growth. We humans yearn to be part of something greater. In our hearts, we know we are, but we may not know how to get to that spiritual experience. Coincidence awareness emerges through the spontaneous appearance of meaningful coincidences in everyday life. Rather than removing people from the events of daily life as is required by most spiritual practices, coincidence awareness immerses people more deeply in their current life and sometimes beyond. For some, meaningful coincidences become many mystical experiences. Reality as they know it melts into a brief fusion of mind and environment, become one, bringing with it a numinous, mystical, spiritual feeling of oneness with all there is. For example, they might find themselves singing by a lake or a forest in the rain. As the rain slows, the sun peeps through, acting briefly like a spotlight on the not so solitary performances. The person might feel that they are on a, the stage of eternity. Out in the forest one time, uh, one day I was standing next to a tree on a mountain north of San Francisco on Mount Tamalpais. And for some reason I was standing there, I decided impulsively to ask the tree a question. I said, what, what are you doing here? I asked the tree. I heard a distinct replay separate from my own thoughts from myself. I heard what I thought was the tree saying, I'm standing here. I mean, it's pretty funny. Of course, that's what the tree was doing, but I heard the tree doing it. I think it was a kind of ironic thing for the tree to tell me that. I mean, I could have asked him, could have said something else, but the tree is standing there just as I was standing against the tree. Well, of course. And now in Charlottesville, Virginia, a little outside of town uh, in a place called Mint Springs, I have established an ongoing relationship with three trees on a mountain. To what parts of nature can you connect with? Sometimes it can be flowers, sometimes it can be birds. For example, many grief stricken people are surprised and comforted by the blooming of their favorite flower, the flower of the deceased person in the winter. The flower blooms when it shouldn't bloom, or usually doesn't. In her PhD dissertation on synchronicity and grief, Jennifer Hill described how a gardenia bloomed in November after her grandfather died. That unexpected growth helped her grieving grandmother heal. Her grandmother knew very well that gardenia was his favorite flower, and he was communicating to her something which she interpreted as He's flowering, he's all right. Finally, coincidences can be practical clues to extraordinary human abilities. Be contact, being contacted by someone you are thinking of suggests telepathy. Finding your way to where you needed to be without conscious planning suggests human GPS, as you'll read about me and my dog snapper when I was eight or nine, and we found each other after each of us was lost. Feeling the pain of a loved one at a distance suggests a form of telepathy, which I call simulpathy. Most of the world's religions have recorded instances like these. The problem is less whether or not we have these parapsychological or psi abilities, and much more how to optimally use them and not abuse them. Coincidences also have another practical aspect to them. They exercise your mind, just like you need to go to the gym or take a walk or do something physical. It's important to use that thing between your ears regularly, to use it, 
Otherwise, as with your body, you don't use it, you lose it. One of the main things that coincidences do is stimulate wonder and curiosity. Curiosity enhances life enjoyment. Wonder, 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 what's, what, why is that? That's childlike. Children have to wonder. They have, they're curious to figure out what's going on around here. And I got into this coincidence business because I thought coincidences could be clues about what's going on around here. And they are. Coincidences can strengthen your ability to observe yourself. You can strengthen your self-observer because they encourage you to examine your thoughts and feelings and how they relate to your environment. So you have to look at your thoughts and see how they connect with your environment and how then that connects back to you. So you have to observe this connection by looking at each part of it. As I try to suggest to you, they can expand your intuitive ability by allowing meaning to arise from the depths of your mind. There's so much more in our basement or in the underground or in the depths of our minds that we can get some contact with, some way of connecting with that can help guide us, not just individually, but as uh, people in relationships and also the collective human organism, this whole thing that we are as human beings. Coincidences help sharpen your rationality by requiring trial and error testing of your intuitive conclusions about meanings, because not all your impulses, intuitions are going to be right. So you have to figure out by testing which ones have a tone that's right, which ones are worth pursuing, which ones should I avoid, which ones are deceptive. It takes practice. And there's always more practice to do because it's going to be some little odd ones that throw, get thrown in there. You're not going to be able to know. So you have to kind of gingerly test them out. Well, thank you very much. You have taken a leisurely stroll with me down Coincidence Lane. Uh, it's, been, it's been a great experience uh, going through this with you and trying to experience something about coincidences with you and give you some idea about what's what's in my book uh meaningful coincidences again that's the cover back there um comes out september of 2000 2022 and maybe you're, re re you're watching this video after the book is out i hope you get a look at it and i hope this introduction i've given you uh, gives you gives you more interest in it and gives you kind of like uh get you warmed up for exploring these ideas because they are common events that happen to all of us. And I hope to hear from you in the various ways that my social media will do it to let me know what you think of all this. And I look forward to some dialogues. So thank you very much and au revoir. Coincidentally, Dr. Beitman. Is a mental atmosphere like a hologram of cosmic consciousness?